today's lesson is on finding the greatest common factor. So before we get to that, it is important to uh, understand um, what numbers are factor of others. And essentially what we're finding here are our divisibility rules. So what can we divide these numbers by? So we start with one. And since we can divide any number by one, one is going to be a factor of all numbers. After one, we then check two, because two is the next number on the list. And we just want to ask ourselves, what numbers can we divide by two? Well, we can divide any even numbers by two, so two is a factor of even numbers. To figure out what we can uh, figure out what three is a factor of, we do have to do a little bit of work. And we know that we can divide a number by three uh, by doing some work with the digits. And so three is a factor if the digits add up to three, six, or nine. And you could even extend that to 12, 15, and 18, uh, or any multiples of three. So in a number like 47, you add the digits, 4 plus 7 is 11, and then you take the digits of 11, 1 plus 1 is 2, so you cannot divide 47 by 3. But if you have 57, you take 5 plus 7 to get 12, you take 1 plus 2 to get 3, so you could divide 57 by 3. 4 is a factor. You know that you can divide a number by 4, but... Um, by looking at your factor list. And if two is a factor, it is possible for four to be a factor. And four is a factor based on what two is paired with, because you'll put your factors down in pairs. So four is a factor if two is paired with an even number. So for example, 36, 2 times 18 is 36. 2 is paired with 18, which is an even number, which tells you that 4 is a factor. After 4, we go to 5. And for 5, we know that we can divide a number by 5 if the number ends in 5 or 0. So again, if we go back to 47, we know that 5 is not a factor because 47 ends in a 7, and that's not a 5 or a 0. After 5, we go to 6, and 6 is a factor if both 2 and 3 are factors. So if 2 is in your list, if 3 is in your list, then 6 has to be in your list. If one of those is missing, 6 cannot be a factor. Now, after 6 is normally 7, but I don't have 7 on here because there's really no rule. There's nothing I can tell you to look for to determine whether or not 7 is a factor. So for 7, you just kind of have to try it. You just have to see if you can divide the number by 7. After 7, we then go to 8, and we know that 8... Um, is going to be a factor if 4 is paired with an even number. After 8 is 9, and we know that 9 is a factor if the digits add up Nine. So if you take the digits of a number, add them up, and they become 9 or 18 or 27, then not, you can divide it by 9. And then 10 is a factor if the number ends in 0. So if the number ends in 0, you know that you would be able to divide it by 10. So those are our factoring rules, and hopefully those will help you uh, as we go into our lesson where we factor out numbers. 
So our um, standard, our objective for today is to find the greatest common factor of two whole numbers less than or equal to 100. So before we get to the greatest common factor, we will be identifying common factors. But before we can identify common factors, we do need to have a list of factors. So we want to find the common factors of 12 and 30. So we're going to start by creating a list of factors for 12. And what we're looking for are all of the pairs that if we multiply those two numbers together, we get the result of 12. And this is where we can use those rules of factoring to help us out. So we start with 1 and we ask ourselves, is 1 a factor of 12? And of course 1 is a factor of 12 because 1 is a factor of every number. And when we put down factors, we put them down in pairs. So 1 times 12 is 12. 1 will be the lowest factor in our list, 12 will be the highest factor in this list, and then we're going to work towards the middle. After 1, we check 2. And ideally, you know your multiplication facts, and you know that you can multiply 2 by 6 to get 12. But if not, you know that 2 is a factor because 12 is an even number, and so you just have to figure out 2's partner, and it's 2 times 6. And as you see, our numbers are getting closer together because, once again, we are working towards the middle. After 2, you check 3. And again, ideally, you know your multiplication facts, but if not, you would add your digits. 1 plus 2 is 3, so you know that 3 is a factor, and it is 3 times 4. After 3, you would check 4, and you'll notice that 4 is already in our list, so we do not need to go any farther. We have found all of the factors for 12. <coughs> Excuse me. And so now we're going to find our factors for 30. Once again, we start at 1, and we know that 1 is a factor of all numbers. And in fact, any factor list we create is always going to start with 1 and the number. After 1, we check 2. 30 is an even number, so 2 is a factor. And it's 2 times 15. If needed, do your multiplication or do your division off to the side to figure out what the partners are. After 2, we check 3, and since the number is 30, we know that 3 is a factor, and it's 3 times 10. After 3, we check 4. Well, if we know our multiplication facts, we know that there's nothing that we can multiply by 4 to get 30. Or, if you use your rules of factoring, 2 is paired with 15. 15 is not an even number, so 4 cannot be a factor. So after 4, we check 5. 30 ends in a 0, so we know that 5 is a factor and it's 5 times 6. And then after 5, we would check 6. 6 is already in our list, so we are done. So now, after we have uh, found all the factors, now we look for the common factors, and common factors are going to be the ones that are in both lists. Well, 1 is always going to be in both lists, because 1 is always going to be a factor of a number. We see that 2 is in both lists. We see that 3 is in both lists. 4 is not in both lists, 6 is in both lists, and 12 is not in both lists. I don't need to check the remaining numbers in 30 because they would have already shown up in our list. So our common factors of 12 and 30 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. So now I want to find the common factors of 10 and 28. So once again, I start by making my list of factors, and I always start with 1 and the number. After 1, I check 2, and I know that 2 is a factor of 10 because 10 is an even number, and it's 2 times 5. Well, between 2 and 5, the only numbers that exist between 2 and 5 are 3 and 4. I can't multiply anything by 3 to get 10. I can't multiply anything by 4 to get 10. And then the next number I would check is 5 which is already in my list. So now I create the factors of 28. Again, I start with 1 in the number. 28 is an even number, so 2 is a factor, and that's 2 times 14. 2 plus 8 is 10. 10 is not a multiple of 3, so 3 cannot be a factor. 2 is paired with an even number, which makes 4 a factor. That's 4 times 7. And then after 4 is 5, well, 28 does not end in a 5 or 0, so 5 is not a factor. After 5 is 6, since 2 and 3 
are not both factors, then six cannot be a factor, which then takes us to seven, which is already in our list. So now I go through and look for the factors that are in both lists. One is in both lists. Two is in both lists. Five is not, and 10 is not. So now my common factors are one and two. Excuse me. So now that we've uh, worked on how to find the greatest common or common factors, now we can move on to finding the greatest common factor. And one strategy we could use is the strategy that we've used so far, where we make our list of factors, we find all the common ones, and then the largest number in the list would be your greatest common factor. But there is another strategy that we could utilize, and this only really works if you're finding the greatest common factor. And it's very similar to the factor ladder we did for prime factorization in our last lesson. So we take 45 and 75, and you're going to divide both numbers. Since they both end in a 5, that means we can divide them by 5. And so 45 divided by 5 is 9. 75 divided by 5 is 15. And then we need to look to see if we can divide those numbers by the same thing. We can divide both 9 and 15 by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. And we cannot divide 3 and 5 by the same number. So to find the greatest common factor, we take the numbers that we have on the side and we multiply them together. So 5 times 3 is 15. So the greatest common factor is 15. So for 20 and 32, they're both even numbers, so we can divide those by 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 32 divided by 2 is 16. Those are both even numbers, so we can divide it by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 16 divided by 2 is 8. We cannot divide those by the same number. So we take what's on the side, and we take 2 times 2, which is 4. So our greatest common factor is 4. If you recognize that you could divide both 20 and 32 by 4, you can do that. And then you just have that one number on the side, and that would be your greatest common factor. So, for example, here we have 15 and 27. We can divide both of those by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 27 divided by 3 is 9. We cannot divide 5 and 9 by the same number. So, our greatest common factor is 3 because that's the only number that we have on the side. 36 and 54. If you recognize that they're both even, you can divide them by 2 to get 18 and 27. You realize that you can divide 18 and 27 by 3 to get 6 and 9. And you can divide 6 and 9 by 3 to get 2 and 3. So in this case, we have three numbers off to the side. So we take all three of those. We take 2 times 3 times 3, which is 18. So our greatest common factor is 18. And that is our lesson for today. I hope this helps.